Johnson and Paul Baker here. Um, Gary, you've been here for two years. You've, you've signed. Um, how did you come to that decision? Because you weren't sure last time we spoke to you what was going to happen. Well, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I was sure that I was uh, happy with the environment of the, this type of club that I enjoy managing. And uh, the only worry was, you know, obviously you didn't know quite where the board was with that. Uh, we had a fantastic meeting uh, the other day. Yeah, really good meeting. Whenever it was, Tuesday, I think. And really that sort of told me that the, the board had the sort of same ambitions that I've got, and that's to create a club that's, that has that winning environment with committed people. And, and if you've got that, then you've got a chance. And uh, I was pleased to, to hear that. Um, I put over my ideas, you know, they put over their ideas, and, and if they match, then uh, you know that there's a, there's a chance of having your quality of life for the next couple of years. I mean, you mentioned you want committed people there. You felt that some people this season haven't been as committed as they should. So what happens now? Do you review who's the playing staff? Yeah, of course you do. Um, you, know, you review. The good thing is, is that I've spent a, sort of a honeymoon period, if you like. Um, not, a very, <laughs> not a very pretty <laughs> lady. Pretty lady. I was honeymooning with, but anyway, um, you know, because we knew that things obviously weren't right because. The club was bottom of the table for, for whatever reason. Um, but um, it was good that I was able to see the club and see the committed ones and the uncommitted ones. And the one thing I am is truthful with, with everybody. I'll, I'll be truthful if I think someone's not quite pulling their weight. Sometimes you can't go public with names, especially when it's players, you know, because people see it as a bit of bullying and all that sort of thing. But um, Certainly, after a few weeks, people know who it is that I'm either referring to or uh, people didn't, were not here long under my re regime. And uh, we had to move out the, the, what I felt was the uncommitted, and there's still some that will be changed, of course. And the whole thing's got to change. I think we all agree that yeah. you know we want the supporters to understand why the manager's brought in certain players, why he's left out certain players. And, People have got to know that you know we're going to demand a lot because it, just because we got relegated doesn't mean to say that we've got to drop our standards. We've got to up our standards, and that's exactly what the chairman said. Is there a chance for any of the players who haven't impressed you to have they still got a chance to change your mind? It's a bit late now. Um, you know there, there'll be some trying to change our minds now, but uh, you know the club's been relegated, sort of thing, and. Uh, Leopards don't change their spots generally long term. They might for the short term in the hope of getting a job, but uh, I look deeper than that. And they've got to be naturally committed people and people that will commit to the cause. And that's that's what I like. And then you know, we all enjoy having people that are committed to the cause that we're going to set out. So going into the game against Wimbledon this weekend, how much can you take from that game? What, what are you sort of looking to get from this game? Well, this game, all games matter, of course, anyway. Um, and, but this game, we've got to probably have a look at two or three that we haven't looked at. It'll be interesting to see um, some of the young lads, see where, how close they are. So I hope people don't mind me doing that, but uh, that's probably going to be more beneficial to us than to play people that are possibly not going to be here uh, for the next campaign. So, you know, I'd like to have a have a look at them and give them the opportunity. Uh, I have done since people like Harry and Bobby and uh, have, have, have come back from their from their loans, um, and you know, it'd be be good to see whether they can actually handle the uh, the big time, as it were. And then after this game, it's summer. What what are you going to be doing this summer? You're going to be off on your holidays for a bit, or are you, are you focusing on this straight away? Uh, the chairman said I'm not allowed on holidays. <laughs> um, but even if I'm on holiday, to be honest, wherever I am, I'll be bumping into players and uh, I'll be calling players. And uh, you know, it's, it's 24 hours a day now until the season starts because we've got to recruit, right? We've got to get the right recruitment for, for our this club's new personality. And uh, that's what we've got to do. And 
I know a lot of players that have worked with me, some handle it, some don't. The ones that did handle it will be on the phone to me, I'm sure. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a group of players that will be competitive at this level and the next, because you've always got to get in players for two levels, if you can. Um, and then you have that chance of building on that first group so that they're going to be close enough to have that double promotion. That's, that's I, the ideal, that's what you've got to aim for. So the two years is really to see how far you can go in two years as opposed to building for the one level over two years. You know what I mean? I don't think either of us want to wait that long before we get back into the football league. Great. James? Paul, um, you said on Saturday that you wanted to get this done quickly. Did you ever really believe that you get it done by the Wednesday of the, the following week? I think where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, <laughs> and um, for me, uh, we need to move quickly because um, player recruitment is, is, is the reason why we are where we are. Uh, player recruitment will be will tell us how successful we're going to be next year. So next season starts now. Uh, this isn't the end of this season, this is the start of next season. Mm. Uh, so it's really, really important to get Gary in. And I think there are a lot of bonuses actually. And uh, uh, either Barrett, Gary's had a really, really good look at, at what he's got. Um, so he's not coming in cold, he's not coming in with a month to go to the start of the season. Um, he's seen all the facilities, he's got to know the staff and, and, and the director, his own management team. It's really important that the management team is, is sort of all together. Uh, and I'm, I'm confident that will be. But uh, I think either Gary's track record and his experience um, with the Oval in, in the conference as well, to be fair, um, but at all levels, national as well. So um, it, it's a fantastic um, CV that he's got, so I think uh, we're chuffed to bits to, to get him on board. I was concerned, he was supposed to ring me yesterday morning, I didn't get the call till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> so I was thinking, yeah, okay, who's he talking to? <laughs> but the, 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 there are reasons for that, so I was really, really delighted to, to get the call, um, because we, we know, we, we've got on well, uh, and um, yeah. We just need to, we need to kick on. A, we had a great actually we had a great board meeting on Monday where we you know it's a difficult board meeting. Uh, we went through all the budgets and stuff so that we knew what playing budget and what manager and budget we've been able to give the new manager. We were able then to give that to, to Gary on, on the Tuesday um, to look over. So that when we met him on the Wednesday, I think it was, you know, he had a good idea of what sort of budget he was going to be able to work with. Um, and in fact, his first reaction was, "Is that for a five side team?" <laughs> uh, so, and that is reality, you know, uh, the sort of budget we're, we're looking at now. I mean, it's slightly more than five exciting, but that's the sort of reality compared to you know, the monies we were getting in the Football League. But uh, you know, we've done our very, very best to, to give him the maximum possible pay budget. That's what we'll be judged on next year. And, and is the aim to bounce back? And, and do you feel that Gary is the right man to, to try and get that immediate bounce back? The absolute aim is, is to bounce back. I mean, you know, with the parachute payment, you know, we'll have that additional money this year that we won't have the following year. Uh, and, I, and I think if because we made the appointment early, um, you know we can build um, and, and have players in place, you know, in good time for pre-season, and kick on in pre-season and hit the ground running because in the conference games start early, uh, it's quite a few games early on in the season, so I think it's important to make a really really good start. Yeah. But I think the other thing about it, appointing Gary to soon was to, you know, to send that message to the football uh, supporters and fraternity in Gloucestershire that actually uh, we're not just. Um, going to moan and groan and, and, and cry in our, in our tea for, for the next three weeks. We're going we're gonna to move on and get on with it. Uh, and so hopefully that's just sends out a really strong message. Two-year contract, uh, a man over manager who's got some fantastic uh, calibre and pedigree. Uh, and that will inspire fans and season ticket holders. And I've been checking the forums and I'm told I should <laughs> never do it, but I do. And actually there was not one negative, which must be the first time in the last 20 years uh, that when we boards made a decision, there hasn't been one negative. Uh, there wasn't one negative response to the appointment, so that's a really good start. And um, people saying, people saying they're going to take season tickets out, who haven't previously done that. So you know, it's only one or two people, but actually, it's it's the right message. And Gary, how easy was it the decision to to commit? Well, it's 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 only easy when you when you feel that the club's right for you. You know, that you just feel right. I don't know what it is. Some some clubs you go into, and I. Turn clubs down in my in the past um, and bigger clubs in the past. Um, if you just get a feel for a place, and the older you get, the more experience you get as to you know, how you feel that you're going to get on with the board of directors, because that's very important. We've all got to be of the, the same thoughts, if you like. Um, and uh, you know, you look at the training ground, and you know, there's there's certain there's certain things here that. We've got to improve everything, that's for mm. sure. I don't think we've got any 
doubts about that. There's little things we've got to improve on. But um, it's here. It's all here. What I need for my you know, everyday work that I enjoy. And, uh, and then I just need to get players in that, um, what they say, if you want to motivate players, get players that can be motivated. <laughs> And that's really important. And also, you've got to get players that enjoy playing football. Because a lot of them enjoy being footballers, but don't enjoy playing football. <laughs> and uh, we got to... But I've been around a little while, even though I don't look as I have. <laughs> Sitting here next to the chair. <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> um, you've got to get those players in that, uh, that know how you work. Because the ones that enjoy our work, enjoy working with me. Mm. The ones that uh, you know, I've, I've had run into it over the past, they won't be on the phone and I certainly won't be on the phone to them, but that's because they're, they've got a different ethos to me. Yeah, you've, I think there's eight or nine players out of contract after, after Saturday. Have you already almost made your mind up on, on whether any will be getting contracts for next season? Yeah, pretty much so. I mean, I had to have a good look at it before I agreed to, to come here. It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit awkward with some because you've got... Some in contract, of course, that uh, you feel haven't really got a big future with the club. Um, some have. Um, and we've got to make room to have a little bit of a, not a total clean sweep, because you're not going to be able to do that, but certainly you're going to need to bring in that um, that player that is conducive to, to what you're looking for. You know? and, and I I want, you know, the fans have had a little bit of a rough time this year, you know. And um, and I'd like to you know get them a team that they can see are committed and play with that desire and also play with the uh, football mentality. You know I want to be a football team in the conference and, and not a conference team in the conference. Mm. That's probably a little bit disrespectful to some of the teams because they do play football. But that's how I got out of it previously and that's how I, I'd like to do it. And I think fans enjoy teams playing football with that desire. And that's what we, I want to try and give them. So some of the, I think the 14 that are currently in contract, you may be looking to sort of move on yeah. in any way yeah. at the end of this. And, and I suppose you echo what the, the, the chairman said about um, it being the first game of next season yeah. on Saturday exactly. almost. Exactly it is. It I mean, you know, in, in my mind, we tried very hard to try and keep the team in the second division. Um, it was always going to be a difficult job with the group that had been put together. Some of them are still and were second division standard, uh, some maybe a, uh, a level higher, but some won't. And uh, you know, you've got to be careful that you don't get that sort of journeyman really that, that, that goes around the clubs picking up last uh, you know, like year, yearly contracts and then generally move on somewhere else. There's something not, not quite right about that. So you know, we need committed players and uh, I think I know how to find them. Do you, and do you think attracting them to Cheltenham won't be a problem, given that they've just gone out of the league? Is it, do you back yourself to well, to bring in the right well, the right kind of play? Yeah. But uh, there's going to be thousands of players out of work mm. this year, and they're all going to need work. Yeah. And uh, I think because I've worked with many of the boys that are out there over the years, over twenty odd years, um, I, I think there'll be enough out there that I can entice to Cheltenham Town Football Club um, because Gary Johnson's here, you know what I mean? And, and, I'm, and they know that they've had a uh, pass with me that's been successful. So hopefully we can entice a few like that. We also develop, this is a very, very good club for developing young players. Mm. So I'm hoping that even the 18, 19, 20 year olds that still need developing will see it as an opportunity to get their game going to have a bigger future, either with us or another club. That's almost the identity, is it, to bring in young, hungry players rather than sort of maybe experienced ones who have who have not have, performed? No, you've got to have a bit of both. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I don't think we've got... I think most people know there's not too many leaders in the club mm. at the moment, and you need those leaders, and those leaders are not generally 19, 20 years old. You know, they've got to be experienced people that have been around, and... I've always, I always say, if you're going to war, you want to go to war with somebody who's already been there. And that's the experience that you need in a football club. And so you're going to need three or four of them. 
and then you have the young whippersnapper uh, legs and energy around them. But uh, that doesn't mean to say if they're old, they haven't got that mm. desire and ambition still. They're the players we've got to bring in. Do you think you'll be able to read a bit into your team selection on Saturday as to, no, as to, as to, as to well, the future? you can do it you want. Um, yeah. Unless you get your head in the sand. <laughs> um, it's, uh, that's a good reaction to yeah. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's something that people can read into it as and when. I, I do leave little cryptic messages for you, really, that if you start understanding me, you can definitely read between the lines, mm. definitely. I don't think that's difficult. Um, but you can't sue me because I won't bring <laughs> up any names, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that's important, that is, that uh, Saturday, I've told you what the idea of it is, is to yeah. have a good look at some of the young lads, but they've got to have some of the experienced lads. Some of those experienced lads will, will be involved in my head for the next season. And... Uh, you remember the Roy Keane one? Have you not turned that phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time turning that phone. Right? <laughs> Someone's going to do some work in the ground for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so some of them will be involved, in it, but I'll see. You know, the last game, yeah. some people will be there trying to show me that they want to still be a part of it. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's still a it's a football league club playing outside the football league now. That's what you really have got to have. People have got to look at it. And is the aim your aim to, to come straight back, use that parachute payment to the best of your ability and, yeah, and be back? My aim was just to get a job somewhere, then I'd assign a ten year bill. We've got to work very hard as a, as a chairman and a manager to make sure that the, the club gives itself every chance and its fans the chance to get back into that league. But it's a good opportunity now to, to sweep away all the old and, and just bring in a bit of a freshness and. Hmm. Uh, I think everybody sort of needs that. I, I read the website sometimes as well to get a general mm. idea of what's going on, and I think the fans need, you know, need a bit of a pick me up. I think, and uh, they'll get that if the team's showing them that it's giving hundred percent and, and getting results, of course, which is what you've got to do. Just finally, it was I think thirteen years since you won the conference. How, how, yeah. how, how sort of up to date are you on that league? Is it something that a, a lower league manager knows all about because of because of the, the potential resource yeah, that's in there anyway? Where you have to recruit from sometimes, and uh, yeah, I, I know the recruitment's key at any club, and uh, I do. I've kept in touch with the conference, and then I worked for BT a few times for a couple of conference games. Last night, it was only a month or so ago, and I'm eating in Kidderminster. Um, that was live on Sky, and I was a, one of the co commentators, mm -hmm. sort of thing. So, no, I keep a, a good watch in it, and I watch all BT has now got a good coverage of the uh, mm -hmm. conference, Panorama League, and I watch all those games. So, good question, and uh, yeah, the answer is yes, I've kept right up to date with, with the conference. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.